You know you are tired after a long day at work when you are playtesting to your element and you start summoning monsters and you forget that you have a Fenrir in your hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm stupid when I'm tired. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1200 ladder, I might as well start saying 1300 ladder because we're at 1,296 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen, and that makes me very happy, especially after the apparent heart attack that I probably, well, most likely had last week on Thursday. I really appreciate all the love and support that y'all have been showing. I'm feeling much better. I've taken the time to take care of my health, get things figured out. We're back on that YouTube grind, ladies and gentlemen. I have a bit of an interesting topic for you today, and I wanted to not show my sexy face and instead show off Synchro Monsters. Now, this is going to probably rub some people the wrong way, but I think that it needs to be said, right? I feel that Synchro Monsters are just the weakest summoning mechanic in all of Yu-Gi-Oh now. You know, over the years, we have seen a lot of different summoning mechanics come and go. You know, we've got pendulums, we've had exceeds, and now we've got links. We now have fusions being a much more busted mechanic than they were back in the day. And what's interesting is how that the next summoning mechanic after fusion monsters, what we got in 2009 with the Duelist Genesis was Synchro Monsters. Obviously, we didn't have Baronade de Fleur back then, but just in general, you know, we got Synchro Monsters for the better part of, I want to say, like, four years, something like that. And then I think 2012 is when we began to see Exceeds. And the reason why I say that Synchro Monsters are the worst type of monster in Yu-Gi-Oh!, or maybe it's the worst summoning mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh!, is because you commit so much to these monsters that it's not really worth it. Now, allow me to explain, because I'm sure that some people are going to say, well, Avery Edison format was all Synchro Monsters. Granted, you didn't have Exceeds for like another two years or so, but Synchro Monsters were very powerful. What are you talking about that Synchro Monsters aren't good anymore? And I say that because, yes, we have broken things like Baronet de Fleur, King Calamity, even Quasar Dragon is a fairly good card. Cosmic Blazar Dragon is a really good card. And it's not that these cards inherently are bad. It's the fact that you have to commit so much to make these, usually. And on top of that, you have to specifically use a tuner monster. Now, the reason why I say use a specific type of monster, not just because you do have to use tuners for a synchro summon, but also because of the fact that all of the other summoning mechanics that we have gotten over the years that have been add-ons, and I even though fusions weren't an add-on, let's be honest, fusions were completely reworked. You know, when you look back at like even GOAT format, where there wasn't an, a limit on the extra deck, all the fusion monsters were garbage. You know, you had things like Skull Warrior or Skull Knight, whatever it was called, that required... Uh, what was it, Skull Servant plus another random monster? Like, no one was legitimately playing Dragon Master Knight back in the day. No one was legitimately, legitimately playing Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon back in the day because who was going to play three Blue Eyes White Dragon and a Polymerization and somehow get all three in their hand or on the field and then fuse them all together when it's just better to have three Blue Eyes on the field? You know, no one was making any of these things legitimately. You know, you even look at things like Gate Guardian combined. You know, it's Contact Fusion. We saw Contact Fusion with things like Gladiator Beast, where all of a sudden you had these fusion monsters where you didn't need polymerization. You just needed, you know, let's say Bestiari and another Gladiator to make Geyseris. It was so good that you could have the monsters set on the field. They didn't even have to be face up. You could contact these into a Geyseris. You could pop two cards, attack for 24, bounce it back to the extra deck, or as it was called back then, the fusion deck, summon out another Gladiator Beast, and you were just going to town. Back then, that was so insane. And I feel that for synchros to get that retrain or get that rework, get that power creep boost to be able to keep up with everything else, I think we need to see more things like Chaos Angel, where it requires a tuner plus a non-tuner light or dark, but then you can treat one light or dark monster you control as a tuner. Being able to treat any monster that in this case is light or dark as a tuner is insane because now you can just use any generic monster to help get you to that synchro play. And the reason why 
along with this stuff that I say that synchros aren't very good is because when you look at exceeds, when you look at links, you know, exceeds, let's take Abyss Dweller for an example, something I think is going to be a massive thing in this current format. It requires two level fours. How hard is it to get two level fours, especially in a current modern format, modern meta deck like tier, how hard is it to get two level fours up on the board? It's not that hard. You have something like Time Thief Redoer, where if you slam together two level fours and you use the effect of Redoer to banish it, if you use something like a Sharon, then you're going to get the effect of the Sharon to fuse. Whereas if you slam together a Divine or the Herald, you dump a level four, make it level six, synchro with the Sharon, congratulations, you made a Baron, but you foregoed the ability to make the Time Thief Redoer with another level four to then detach the Sharon and get the effect of fuse. Who would ever, in their right mind, slam together a Diviner and a Sharon to make a Baron and forego the fusing ability? Like, that just doesn't make any sense. Exceeds and links, and I feel even to an extent fusions, depending on whatever deck you're playing, offer more versatility in the cards that you are playing and more adaptable ways to use your cards than just synchro summoning. You know, you look back at something like Edison format, or even if you look at older decks from back in the day that tried to go for big plays like shooting Quasar Dragon, something that I think about is like Laval's, right? Where Laval's, back when they first came out, there and when shooting Quasar Dragon first came out, their whole end goal in life was to slam as much of their deck onto the field as possible, combo their little ass cheeks off, because obviously Nibiru wasn't a thing back in the day, summon like 35 times, and they would get out Formula Synchron, Hyper Librarian, and like any other level 5, I think is what it was, uh, like maybe Ally of Justice Catastrophe, or even another Librarian if it wasn't at 1 at the time, get all this draw power, and then they slam down a shooting Quasar Dragon, and that was their play. Like, if you didn't out the Quasar Dragon, then like you were going to lose and that was how Laval's and some other synchro decks back in the day was their win con it was hard to get to the quasar but if you could then like you just won because having an omni negate and it can attack multiple times that on its own was enough to win you the ball game now if you just end on a quasar it's like you get laughed out of the room like bro all you ended on was a quasar like baron de fleur is so much easier to summon and is arguably better than a quasar and yet quasar is harder to get out obviously we have things like crimson dragon now that can cheese out shooting quasar or any other thing like that most people obviously are going to go for the king calamity because that's just an auto win but you know even when you look at these complicated synchros as i'm going to call them where King Calamity requires not just one tuner. No, 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 no. It requires two tuners plus a non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro. That's hard to go for. Whereas with something with Crimson Dragon, you commit to that level 12, you still have to commit to another level 12 Synchro to have access to that King Calamity. And the point that I'm getting at here is that tuners have always been bad and at first i didn't realize this but i was talking with a buddy of mine shout out to valley d who were always shouting out on the channel and he was explaining to me how tuners have always been bad and i was like well what are you talking about and the way that he explained it or at least the way that i thought about it too was the fact that you have to specifically use a tuner to make a specific type of monster whereas like links just don't require any of that you know you look at cross sheet two monsters with different names how hard is that sp little knight two effect monsters every deck under the sun plays effect monsters that's not hard it may as well just say two monsters like link monsters offer so much more compared to synchros if you're going to be playing tuners in your deck you have to make sure like you can use them in multiple ways in case you don't have that synchro line available to you you're forcing your 40 card deck usually unless you're going to be playing more than 40 for whatever reason to include tuners and also make sure that you have the tuner in your hand to get out to the field or it's wherever so that you can get it onto your field to synchro with a specific level monster to go for a specific level synchro and like yes that's been made easy easier i should say in most decks compared to others but why commit to that line of play when like you could just shove together two monsters to make an SP Little Knight or, you know, four of your monsters plus an opponent's one monster to make an underworld goddess. Like, you see what I mean? Like, there's so much more value in these other things that I feel like because of the fact that synchros 
have been around for so long and we've gotten other summoning mechanics and just better cards overall that aren't synchro related, it's kind of made synchros take a back seat in a way where like to see a synchro based deck, AKA based, otherwise known as badass sexy engine as we called it on the channel, where it was just 40 cards, 50 cards, 60 cards of good shit dot deck piles you know, that was easier to do because, like, you had the Punk Engine, you had Anaconda, you had Hauke Fibrax. You had these things to where you could play a bunch of different engines and have synchros and, like, see success instead of, like, having to take such a minus in card economy to commit to a couple of synchros. You know, there's a reason why Synchron decks aren't very good. And that's because of the fact that, like, for one thing, they rely on junk speeder so much that the junk speeder gets negated, then you're screwed. Then you got to play cards like the Adventure Engine, which uh, just we're not seeing as much anymore. And I feel like that that's just because the bricks are just way too much to really deal with. They just can really screw you over in the long run. So it makes no sense to try and play Synchros when if you're committing your non-engine to being tuners, there's other better things that you could play out there, whether it's Book of Moons for certain matchups, Call by the Great, Forbidden Chalice to stop the Dweller because Dweller is going to be insane this format. There's there's a lot of ways that I think that they can improve Synchros. I think that they could bring out an archetype where like all the monsters can be treated as tuners or non-tuners. Am I saying that like Synchro should be tier zero? No. Do I think that the Synchron deck can do okay? If you're at Locals, yeah. Like Locals, anything can do well. But I think that for at least the foreseeable future, I don't think that we're going to see just strictly 15 card Synchro extra deck decks do that well. And I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, we're getting the new TG stuff. Again, TGs are synchro-based decks, so they're instantly bad because they're focusing on summoning out synchro monsters that they have to commit a lot of resources to. And if those synchros get negated or they die somehow, then the TG the TG players sitting there with their diddly in their hand figuring out how they're going to play with themselves. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What, am, am I totally right on this? Am I just totally like off in another universe? Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.